Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for joining us uh, this morning to acknowledge the bravery and the dedication of our wonderful, wonderful first responders. I want to uh, thank all of you for coming out uh, this, this morning. We're joined by Assistant Fire Chief uh, Jeff Siegel, uh, Police Commissioner Batts, and Transportation Director. You could come on up. We're not going to bite you. I know you're still new, but... You're not used to us. Just stay away from this one. This one. <laughs> and our uh, transportation director, William Johnson, I'm pl uh, pleased to have here, as well as uh, other members of my team. So on Friday night, a uh, police officer responded to an accident on the JFX. In addition, the Department of Transportation deployed a tow truck to remove the vehicle uh, and to ease uh, traffic congestion. This is something that we do on a routine basis on the Jones Falls. But on Friday, this particular situation escalated when a driver struck the emergency vehicles on the shoulder, injuring the officer and throwing the tow truck driver over the barrier into the Jones Falls below. The tow truck driver, Mr. Derek Dunn, wanted to join us today, but is still recovering at home with his wife by his side. I know that we all wish he could be here with us. He's able to recover because, thank God, Baltimore City has some of the bravest and best trained first responders in the country. While it, <laughs> while emergency units responded to the accident on the highway, quick thinking officers responded below. They rushed down to the embankment and crossed over the rushing waters to be by Mr. Dunn's side. They stabilized him and they waited for the fire department to arrive with a team to extract him. Six police officers are here today. Officer Scott Reed, Officer Paul Sinchak, Officer Carlos Arias, Officer Jonathan Boyer, Officer Ryan Prosecco, Robert, sorry, uh, Robert Prosecco and Officer Ryan McNusson. I hope I got that right. Did I get it right? Sort of, what is it? Magnuson. Magnuson, all right. You deserve me to get it right. Uh, I just wanted you to know that I am grateful and we are all grateful for your quick thinking and for your bravery. Uh, with all the rain we had last week, the river uh, was higher and rougher than usual. Uh, your heroic efforts helped to save a life and I know uh, had made a tremendous difference in uh, the life of that family. When the fire department was notified that Mr. Dunn had been thrown off the JFX, they deployed members of the Special Operations Command to the scene. In 2012, the SOC um, moved its permanent location to Locust Point. This change made it possible for us to quickly deploy to deploy the rescue teams anywhere in the city, including Friday night's uh, scene below the JFX. When the SOC team arrived, police officers had stabilized Mr. Dunn, but he needed to be removed from the middle of a rising river. Uh, the SOC members crossed the rushing water, prepared Mr. Dunn to be safely transported, and moved him to the safety using a ladder bridge. This harrowing scene was captured by reporters on the location. Footage was amazing. You could see the white caps of the rushing water below the river. Mr. Dunn was taken to shock trauma, but he was not seriously hurt and was able to return home that evening. I want to thank, we want to thank the SOC team members who are here today for saving Mr. Dunn's life. Captain John Kisser, Timothy Hamilton, Anthony Shockney, Stephen Karras, and John Kirkner. Thank you very much. I also want to thank uh, Councilman Carl Stokes. You know, this is in your district, uh, I know, and I know that the, the safety on the roads is it, and, and all of uh, the, the motorists is, is something that is important to you, as this is not the first incident that has happened there. So I want to thank you for being here. So yes, we're here to, to thank the, the first responders, to acknowledge their bravery, but also to talk about the laws that are in place to prevent something like this from happening. The state recently passed a move over law that requires motorists to give more space between themselves and emergency vehicles. It is not, it, it, this is not a suggestion. This is a requirement and a necessity 
to ensure that nothing like this ever happens again. The intent of the law is to provide ex an extra barrier of safety for police officers and firefighters and emergency rescue personnel working along our roads. Wherever you may be headed, it's not as important as the lives of the rescue personnel responding to a crash of a disabled vehicle. Our first priority is to ensure that every police officer, every firefighter, every EMT, every tow truck driver makes it home safely at the end of their shift. So now on behalf of the Dunn family, I'd like to read a statement to our first responders. Our family is very appreciative of the efforts to save Mr. Dunn's life. He will forever be grateful for their quick thinking and for their bravery. I want to thank you again and introduce Assistant Chief Siegel. Well, good morning, all. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, for the introduction. And uh, just want to highlight some things that happened uh, Friday night and, and just to be able to give you some history behind uh, uh, what uh, results from specialized training, uh, heroic efforts on the behalf of the responders, and proper planning, how it can result in uh, saving lives. And Friday night was a good example of that. During any major storm event, uh, Baltimore City Fire Department mobilizes special units to save lives. And in this case, uh, Friday night, not only did we specialize, have specialized units respond, but we also had other units respond there also, uh, as well as uh, the help of uh, other city agencies. So in this example, it was a synergistic effort. Uh, we had several different units there. For example, we had uh, truck 16 there. We had Engine 21, Engine 13, Rescue One, uh, a host of EMS assets, as well as uh, the assistance of the police department there as well. And the bottom line was that uh, we were able to save lives. We were able to save a life there. And the whole history behind this is that uh, in the fire department, we realized that uh, we have a lot of potential here in Baltimore. Uh, storms pass through. We have history of storms. And, in recent years, in this, time, this occasion, uh, we had uh, high waters, swift waters. Uh, and that's not the only time when we have uh, potential in Baltimore. We have building collapse, trench rescue, and all those other things we're faced with day in and day out. But uh, what we have done with the support of the, of the mayor, in 2012, we started a special operation station down in Locust Point where we're able to have specialized units. 24 hours a day to be able to respond to uh, an incident like this. But in this case, on Friday night, once it was determined to be a technical rescue, well, we had our specialized uh, units there, but we also had other units there. Uh, I mentioned that we had engine 13, truck 16, and a host of other uh, engine companies there and EMS assets, and they all worked together synergistically. And as a result, all of our emergency responders were able to come home safely and perform what they trained for, and that's to save lives and protect Baltimore City. These added services will not only help the citizens and visitors of Baltimore, but also ensure that all the Baltimore City Fire Department members of the city agencies will remain safe through their consistent training and efforts in protecting Baltimore. So on behalf of Chief Clack and the entire city of Baltimore Fire Department, as well as uh, other fire department members. And we want to make sure that we thank you, the police officers that helped us with this rescue. And we also want to make sure that we, again, thank you, all of our uh, EMS uh, assets and fire personnel that was there to help out. And the long and short of it is, we're still taking pride in protecting our citizens and visitors of Baltimore and we have a good success story here. Well, Synergy made a difference of us saving lives. Thank you. Now, it's my honor to introduce Police Commissioner Bax. We'll be there when you need us. That is the mainstay. That is our hue and cry. Honor, valor, dedication. Last month, you saw it on the front of the Boston Globe where police officers responded and firefighters to help people. Well, that happens every single day in Baltimore. Without hesitation, 
my guys go into very dangerous scenes day after day, night after night, and we're not always on the front page. This is a time where we stop. This is a time where we pause. And we honor those who have saved the life of Mr. Dunn and many other residents and citizens of the city of Baltimore. The mayor stands in support of us. We stand as a team, police and fire, serving this city. This is just a small way to say thank you to these police officers and firefighters. But if you ask them like I did, uh, are you a hero and what you did, they just say, this is my job. We're here. We'll be here. Applaud them. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. We'll open up for questions. I heard that um, there was some, uh, I guess, scaling down of, of I-83 to get to this. Is, is that accurate? And if so, was that, was that scary? I didn't do that. So. They didn't do that? No? <laughs> I didn't do it, so if anybody... <laughs> Who jumped over? <laughs> well, we didn't actually uh, scale down. We actually took a ladder off truck 16 and actually extended it on the northbound side towards Clipper Mill. And that's how we actually climbed down the ladder and we went through the fence that way. So there was actually no ropes involved. It was just, we just took a ladder off truck 16. And uh, what, was, what was going through your minds as you were responding to this incident? <clears throat> um, actually, we were responding we were just responding to an accident. We didn't know any, at the time, we didn't know anybody was in the water. We were responding with an accident. We were going southbound. There was a lot of traffic. Everybody was out of their vehicles looking. Uh, so we figured we kind of had something big. We just didn't actually know until we actually got on the scene what, what the extent of it was. And then once you saw that there was a gentleman in, in the water, what, what, what were you thinking at that point? Well, my first thought was we grabbed, I grabbed two guys off of truck 16. We went over. Um, we, we tried to see if we could get down from the southbound side, which it was definitely too high and the water was right below us. And then we went over to the northbound side. And so we made access down that way and we saw the police officers already in with the victim at the time. So we just wanted to assist them as best we could. How do you feel, how do you feel knowing that you saved someone's life? <laughs> I mean, like, the commissioner said it's just their job. We go do it every day. So, I mean, it's really, I don't know. Did you say your name? Uh, Strup, S T R U P, David. David, and rank? Lieutenant. Sure, thank you. Hi. Uh, kind of touch base on what uh, the firefighter just uh, basically gave you a statement was we've responded to uh, an officer being hit on 83. Uh, once we got to the scene, uh, Officer Heatherson was already being uh, taken care of by other officers that arrived on the scene first. Uh, at that time, we were advised that a gentleman, Mr. Dunn, was tossed over the barrier of 83. Uh, at that time, uh, we basically saw a way to scale down on the side of 83. Uh, basically, what we did, there was a tree uh, that went all the way down to the bottom. We kind of used that as our support system and uh, dropped off about 10 to 15 foot off down to the, uh, down to the water. Once we got down there, we, uh, we saw Mr. Dunn laying three quarters of the way in the water. Uh, at that time, um, myself along with the officers behind me uh, took it upon ourselves to, we gotta get to him before he gets washed down the river. So at that point, uh, we took our vest and gun belt off and secured those and we uh, made entry into the water and I got over to him uh, along with these officers and we basically just pulled him up in the grassy area. And, uh, and then the cavalry showed up. <laughs> so uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks, and your name for the record? Officer Reed, R-E-I-D. Scott. Commissioner Batts, I just wanted to say, uh, we, talked, we spoke a lot about uh, Mr. Dunn, but uh, also John Heatherson, our police officer was out there. Uh, I visited him in the hospital on uh, Sunday uh, he's recovering well. He just went through uh, a couple surgeries within a 24-hour period. Uh, he was scheduled for a couple more surgeries, so our, our hopes, our wishes, our prayers are out with him. Uh, he's going, for, going through a, a, a bit of a, a painful time. His uh, leg was crushed uh, pretty much, so they have to basically reconstruct that ankle area. So we want to say thank you. He's a hero also. Thank you very much. Um, Mayor, the Comptroller at Board of Essence today said the city is uh, wasting money because they're because of low income contractors, mm -hmm. so they should hire 
full-time employees to staff that. Um, how do you respond to that? No, I, I respect uh, not just the role of the comptroller, but the comptroller and her concerns. And I know that uh, my team and hers have been working to make sure that we're operating all of the things, particularly the things that we have, uh, I would say, joint authority over, that we're doing it if effectively and efficiently. Um, that being said, we're not always going to agree, uh, but I think I can speak for both of us when, when I say that both of us uh, want to make sure that we're providing the services that the city needs in the most effective and efficient way possible, and we'll continue to work together uh, toward that end. Well, this has been an ongoing issue between mm -hmm. Digicon and new companies. Do you think it's worth re-examining this system and moment to think about possibly, or you know, you know, I, I a think, lot of I, I think that the, the comptroller is right to uh, ask questions, so is the, the, uh, the council president, and uh, we are examining that contract and all of them. You know, that, that uh, we have to constantly examine the way we do business to ensure that we're doing it efficiently, and uh, our commitment uh, to the comptroller and to the council president and to the citizens that will continue to make those evaluations and seek uh, the best value for the citizens. Mayor, do you think it was appropriate for you to spend Memorial Day weekend at the vacation home in Cahokia, Delaware, with Lisa Harris Jones, um, who's obviously one of the city's top lobbyists? So Lisa is a lifelong friend. Uh, my family knew her family before I was born. She rents out her property uh, to me and to others. I paid for it. She was there too. Yes. Is that appropriate for you to spend the holiday weekend with the city, one of the city's top lobbyists that had business before the Board of Estimates just this morning? So Lisa's a lifelong friend. Uh, she's, again, family friend before I was born. Uh, she rents out her property. I rented it. How much did you pay? Uh, we can discuss. I, I don't have the exact figure. I paid the rental rate, at least the rental rate, the common rental rate or more. Mayor, when you became mayor and uh, promised a new era of ethical reform and conduct. Mm -hmm. um, since that time, there have been questions that have come up on a number of occasions <coughs> about your own conduct. Is it arena tickets, which caused the ethics board to look at that? Questions about officiating at the wedding of these two lobbyists and then following that now, you know, spending the holiday weekend with them. How do you respond to those who say there are questions about your conduct? I take very seriously your questions as well as the responsibility I feel to the people of Baltimore to conduct myself in an ethical way. Um, that's why when you, you asked the question, I answered honestly. Um, she rents out the property. I paid for it like others who rent the property have done. When I go to a restaurant, I pay the tab, whether it's a friend at the bar or whether it's somebody I don't know. When I go to the, my friend that's a dentist, I pay to get my cavity filled. Uh, I go to get my nails done from a friend, I pay her too. Um, you have a right, and the people of Baltimore have a right to ensure that I act ethically. And I strive to do that every single day, and in this case as well, I followed the rules. Do you intend to continue to have that close friendship with her and Mr. Malone, despite the fact that they are representing companies that make tens of millions of dollars in business with the city? You know, I, the, one of the great things about Baltimore is it's small to more. And when you grow up here, um, I have friends that are lobbyists, friends that are dentists, friends that unfortunately went the wrong way. Um, you know, I, I, I'm blessed to say that I have a lot of successful friends. And my prayer is that, uh, you know, that I can maintain friendships with, with all of them. Did you talk business over the weekend? Never. Okay, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your questions. Thank you all for coming out. <clears throat> I'll start with you. Thank 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 you.